Salutations, I'm Coach Tate with my court coach, and the scariest thing that can possibly happen in trial actually happened this week in the Trump prosecutor disqualification hearing. Let's review that. So if you look at msn.com, this article tells us a little bit about the story. The text show prosecutor's ex-law partner gave info for effort to remove Fannie Wills from election case. To remind you what's going on here, Donald Trump and a co-defendant, Michael Roman, are disputing, are trying to get the prosecutor kicked off the case, trying to get her disqualified, the prosecutor, Fannie Willis. Why? Because they are saying that she hired as a special prosecutor, Nathan Wade, as part of this election case. They're saying that Nathan Wade, this attorney, Nathan Wade, and Fannie Willis have a romantic relationship. They have a dating relationship and there is a conflict of interest between the two. It goes a little deeper than that. But uh, the co-defendant, Michael Roman, his lawyer is, uh, where is it? Ashley Merchant. Now, what's been going on is there's this other guy uh, who has been feeding information to Ashley Merchant, okay? Backstory on that. So the special prosecutor, Nathan Wade, this guy's a lawyer. He used to work for or with a partner, a guy named Terrence Bradley. Now, Terrence Bradley used to be the not just the partner of Nathan Wade, but he, Terrence Bradley, used to represent Nathan Wade in, in Nathan's divorce proceeding. Well, this guy, Terrence Bradley, has been sending text messages to Michael Roman's lawyer, Ashley Merchant, and he's been feeding information about this relationship between Nathan Wade and Fannie Willis, saying, yeah, there's actually something there. There's there's a valid argument, a valid position to say that they did have a dating relationship. So he's been feeding her these this information through text message. And, um, and so Ashley Merchant is bringing this up in the disqualification hearing. She's getting this information from, from Terrence Bradley, and she tells Terrence, look, I need you to testify to all this information. And so she puts him on the stand, and what happens? All of a sudden, Terrence Bradley stops remembering. He says, well, I don't exactly remember what happened. And uh, he's, he's not testifying to the things that she thought he would testify to. And, and so the merchant, the lawyer merchant, tells the judge, judge, he doesn't remember much of anything right now. Uh, and so she's she's got a big surprise. Uh, she's got this testimony that she thinks is coming that doesn't come. Big problem for her, right? And let me just tell you, this happens all the time where, where you're putting on a witness to testify and you've talked to the witness ahead of time and you think the witness knows exactly what to say or, or the, you know, you guys are on the same page as to what the testimony is going to be. And the witness takes the stand and lo and behold, the witness can't remember, uh, whether that's genuine, genuinely can't remember, or there's something else going on. I don't know what happened in this case. Um, but what a huge dilemma. So what happened here? How did uh, the lawyer manage it? Well, it turns out the lawyer was prepared. And it seems like, uh, according to this, the lawyer had actually produced into evidence hundreds of these text messages. That's the way I read this anyway. What that means is the lawyer, it sounded like the lawyer was anticipating just the possibility that Terrence Bradley wouldn't remember or, or the testimony wouldn't go exactly as planned. And the way, what the lawyer did to, to prepare for this possibility is she admitted into evidence hundreds of these text messages. Why? Because if you can't get the evidence that you want in front of the judge, if, if you can't get it through the witness, because the witness doesn't remember or isn't cooperating, you need to have another method, another means of getting this information, getting this evidence seen or heard by the judge. So a couple of lessons we learn here. Um, 
Number one, I just want you to realize this is very, very common. It's perhaps the single most common threat that can happen to your case is through witness testimony, surprises and curveballs that come to you through a witness. Why is that? Because other types of evidence, documentary evidence, it doesn't change. Uh, the, the letters and words on a page are not going to be rearranged. They're not going to be deleted. When you submit a document to the judge, the document remains as is. When you have a witness testify, the witness is going to respond differently to the questions than you might anticipate. Uh, the witness can change his or her mind. Her, his or her memory might be fuzzy in that very moment. Uh, so this is going to happen. It happens in perhaps every single trial. It's going to happen uh, with you in your trial. And it's frustrating when it happens with you and with, with a witness. But when it's your witness and your witness is not saying the things that you anticipate your witness to say, or when your, your own witness is saying things that, that are actually hurtful to your case, that is maddening. So you need to expect it and to prepare for it. So a couple things that you can do to prepare for it. Number one, make sure you have another method of introducing that evidence uh, into into and to be heard. You got to produce it by way of an exhibit, whether that's through text messages or emails or some video, whatever it is that that witness was going to say. You need another way of of getting it in front of the judge. Maybe the, the witness already said it in a text message or in an email or in a video. You need to make sure you're introducing that evidence as well. A second way of preparing for this is by doing a deposition. Prior to trial, conducting a deposition of the witness where, the, where you're asking the witness questions under oath, under penalty of perjury. These depositions can be video recorded as well. And so you, you want to get the witnesses' answers to your questions down and, and said, spoken, before the trial even happens. You do that through a deposition. It's possible that in your case you might be able to do a deposition. It's also possible you might not be able to, depending on how much time you have uh, to prepare for trial. Uh, but usually in a family court action, you're going to be able to, to uh, depose a witness. A third method of preparing for this, this possibility, this inevitability of a, of a curveball of unanticipated testimony is by having the witness speak with a third party before the trial. And that can be with a friend. It can be with uh, a neighbor. It can be with, uh, ideally, with a private investigator. So if you have this witness speak with a private investigator ahead of time, and then the witness later becomes unavailable to testify at trial, or the witness testifies at trial, but the testimony is inconsistent with what the, the witness had previously told the private investigator, then you can have the private investigator testify. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to read up on prior consistent statements and prior inconsistent statements as um, exceptions to hearsay. But those are three things that you can do to prepare ahead of trial for this huge, huge problem that will likely happen in your in your in your trial. Now, four things that you can do to avoid this this threat of unanticipated testimony or this threat of a witness who doesn't remember <laughs> or isn't cooperating. Uh, number one, you want to provide your witness, especially if it's a friendly witness, someone who you think is is planning to be helpful to you, provide this witness with a testimony checklist. This is to prepare the witness on how to testify. Uh, this is something that we include in the full court preps program. If you were to purchase that, uh, you have this downloadable document, the, the checklist that you can just hand to your witness before, before they show up to testify in your trial. The checklist is important because um, a lot of witnesses have never testified in court before. And so they're going to want some, some instructions and some preparation. The second thing that you can do to prepare your witness and to prepare yourself for unanticipated testimony is to prepare your witness. 
Uh, so before you show up at trial, you and your witness should be should be speaking uh, pr probably in a one on one situation, whether it's by video or it's by or it's in person. And you want to go over the questions that you will be asking your witness. Make sure that they know what questions that they can anticipate hearing from you. And you want to hear the answers that they give you uh, in this preparation type setting. You want to make sure you plan enough time for this. Prob depending on what you want from your witness, it could be an hour, it could be two hours or three hours. Maybe it's only 20 minutes. Uh, but you want to practice or rehearse your questions and the answers that you get. And then you can talk about, you know, once you've heard their answers, you can talk to them about what kind of answers they've given. Um, the third thing that you can do to avoid curveballs or unanticipated testimony is you want to make sure that you know what issues and what evidence you want the witness to address in his or her testimony. Once you know that yourself, okay, here's the evidence that I want, here's the testimony that I want, and here's the issues that are important for this, for this witness. Once you know that for yourself, you need to communicate that, or you should communicate that, to your witness who is going to be, this is, I'm presuming this is a witness who's going to be helpful to you. I talk about that with, with your witness. Um, now, this is another aspect that the full court preps program will be helpful to you because the full court preps program that you can purchase at mycourtcoach.com will help you organize your case, help you know which issues you want which witness to testify about. And then once you've got that all organized in your own mind, you can communicate that to your witness. The fourth thing that you can do to prepare to uh, avoid these curveballs and these threats and surprises in trial is to communicate the issues and the facts that you want to avoid. So there will be witnesses that you might want to have testified that there are certain things that you want them to talk about. And there may also be some things that you want to avoid that you don't want them to talk about, whether because the issue is irrelevant or because it's um, it will take too much time or because you would rather have that evidence come uh, come to the judge, come out in trial through a different witness or a different document, different exhibit, uh, whatever the reason is, or whether it's because it's, it's harmful to you and it's something that is already going to be brought up by the opposing party. Whatever the issue is, if there's something that you don't want the, the witness to testify about, then you might communicate that as well. So for instance, uh, you'll see often, and if you, when you're reading appellate cases, you'll see a, appellate cases that have been litigated by someone who's pro per or pro se, and the appellate courts will, will talk about a rambling 60 page argument and, um, judges don't, don't like rambling. No one does. So that might be something that you want to address with your witness. You want to avoid rambling, um, so those are some things that you can do to, to avoid this situation and also some things you can do to prepare uh, when this does happen, when you have a witness who is either uncooperative or doesn't remember uh, the answers to the questions that you ask. I hope that helps. If this is helpful to you, maybe you'll like the video. If it's helpful, maybe you'll subscribe and maybe you will click that little bell if, if you're interested in hearing more, uh, more tips on how to prepare and present your case in court, go ahead and take a look at mycourtcoach.com and our program, The Full Court Preps, which will help you prepare to present the strongest case possible in your court case, no matter what state you're in, no matter what type of case you have or what court you're in, courtroom you are in. Hope that's helpful. Signing off now. More soon.